having issues with odd meters well there's a few things that you can do to work out ways to navigate your way through those now before I go into some detail make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell and make sure to leave a comment below so for odd meters because so many people are familiar so many of us are familiar with 4-4 four, four. Um, if you're in jazz 3-4 is common Odd meters are something that has become more and more common. And I remember being in grad school and that was the first time really being introduced to odd meters and just thrown into it. And it wasn't this type of a situation where I played odd meters and had like a vamp. Some of the first odd meter tunes or songs that we put into odd meters would have been Woody and You, ESP, um, we had done uh, moments notice in odd meters and not just one odd meter but we would take it through multiple odd meters now the thing is going into it like that can start to create a lot of issues and make it very difficult if that's the first time that you've ever really approached odd meters now to bridge this gap between playing 4-4 four, four, and then maybe going into something like a 5-4 or 7-4 or even a 9 or a 13, what you need to do is start with something simple. Start with maybe choosing just one key and it could just be a major key that you're playing out of and put on a drum track or something that will click like a clave pattern. Now there's an app called Drum Genius that has multiple types of uh, odd meters that you can go through and it also has a metronome function that will click this clave pattern. If anything else fails, you can always just click a clave pattern and uh, record that with your phone or, or whatever you have available to you. But taking something as simple as just a major key and playing that odd meter and staying within this home base allows you to start to internalize this odd meter fill. Now, this is just a, the first step because even if you take something like 5-4, well, 5-4 could be divided off into a group of 3 and then 2, but it could also be divided off into 2 and 3. Or maybe you can even divide it off into 4 and 1 if you'd like. Um, maybe one and four. I mean, there's there's different ways that you can accent and do things to uh, play around with those five beats. But being able to have one set way to do it at first really does help. Now, the next thing is that you have this home key that you're in and you're just kind of playing around and you're playing some ideas. You're not really dedicating a certain limitation to uh, stay with and stick to while you're playing. What you're really doing is just freely improvising. Now, the next step I would say is to maybe accent what that clave pattern is. And when you accent that clave pattern, what it's going to do is help you internalize how to possibly structure your phrases. In the long term, you want to drift away from constantly outlining that sort of a pulse within uh, that accent on on the 5-4, some 4, whatever odd meter that you're in because you don't always want to get locked into that but it's one way that you can solidify what the pattern is and how it feels to play it. Now in doing this you can play a, a series of different rhythms to accommodate for that. Uh, you could also play strict quarter notes throughout, you can also play eighth notes throughout and then you could start to branch into things uh, like triplets and then uh, taking it a step further, what you were hearing me doing at the beginning of the video was taking a specific rhythm like a triplet fill over a 7-4 and in doing that I was playing around with the triplet fill, sometimes playing continuous triplet lines, and this is eighth note triplets, sometimes playing the continuous line and sometimes what I was doing is breaking that apart. So introducing this triplet uh, motive, a little phrase, and then building on that over time. 
Um, other things that you could do at this point, because when you lock into uh, playing just a static harmony, and once again, at the beginning of the video, I was not playing static harmony, I was playing over a chord progression, what you want to do is the same. Because if you don't start to set those limitations up, and even if you do, when you play over a static chord, what that does is allows you to get used to the feel, but it also puts you in a state of mind where you really don't have to think about much of anything that you're doing at all, unless, again, you're setting limitations on yourself. So if you put on a 5-4 um, pulse in the back, a 5-4 drum beat, and then you start to play uh, just in one key, you can get lost in playing your usual lines and maybe it doesn't sound like it matches up too well, but if you're playing like continuous eights or something, then uh, really you don't have to be that aware of where that pulse is. So start setting up chord progressions and maybe two chords at a time. That way you can really line it up to hit that next chord and start to target certain chord tones. So for example, like in the song, you know, the chord progression that I was playing, I started with this A flat or G sharp minor, and then I went to an E over uh, G. So it's an E minor chord, but what I have is the G in the bass. And what you could do when you play over top of this is that you could focus on that A flat and play in like over the 7-4 pulse and then what you could do at this point is focus on hitting like a root notes or a third something along those lines that way it solidifies that you know where a point of resolution is and then once you hit on that particular chord tone you let that measure go by and then you start back and you get used to that and then vice versa you start with the second chord and resolve it back to the uh, first chord, that way you have a point of resolution and your lines are actually going somewhere. So I hope with you know a few of these ideas you can start to implement that into your practice and you start to find that it helps in navigating through these odd meters. Now this is just a handful of ideas that you can try. There's more that you can continuously develop and, and add to this in order to help you get through these odd meters. If you're interested and you find this useful, then make sure to leave a comment below, give it a thumbs up. That way I know that you're finding some value from this. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll catch you next time.